Hi everyone, it's Chrissy and welcome back to the channel and welcome back to a couple of really, really exciting videos. So yes, I have been keeping a little bit of a secret the past couple of months. I actually got the chance to build three lots for the Sims 4 Horse Ranch expansion pack. Now, this video isn't sponsored at all. I wasn't paid to make this video or any videos about this pack, but I was paid to make the builds that I did for the pack. So yeah, so I'm not sure in which order I'm posting these videos in because like I said, I did get the chance to build three different lots. I built a starter home, a dance hall, as well as a residential home for one of the pre-existing families. Now, I have no idea in which order I'm posting these videos in, so yeah, I haven't decided that yet. But with all of that said, let's go ahead and jump on into the speed build and talk a little bit more about this whole process and the build itself. Hey everyone, so here we are back in the world of Chestnut Ridge. And today we're actually going to be building one of the only two residential builds that I did for this pack. So this is actually the only occupied residential house that I built. So I also built a starter home in the Galloping Gulch neighborhood of the world. But this one is actually in the Riders Glen area. And it's going to be for a couple of best friends who are living together and like running their own nectar making business and all of that stuff. So that's really, really cool. But yeah, so this house is, like I said, a residential lot. It's on a 30 by 20 lot, and the lot is called Sweet Nectar Glade. Now, in my head, I am still trying, like, I am still struggling to remember all of the proper and, like, final names for these builds, because when I was building this lot and during this whole process, because this process did take a couple of months, I was basically just referring to this lot as the Nectar Making Friends or the Nectar Friends House because we didn't have any like permanent or finalized names for any of like any of the things yet. So we didn't have any permanent or like finalized names for the lots, for the neighborhoods, for you know the sims themselves as well. I didn't even get to see the final sims until like we got early access to this pack so yeah i mean seeing them all finalized and actually finally knowing their names and all of that stuff was really really cool and just seeing how they fit into this build because this is the first time that i have ever been a part of a like project and opportunity like this so like being able to see like official sims like official pack sims in a house that I built has been absolutely incredible like it has been one of the best experiences that like I've ever had so yeah you guys will have to let me know what you think about this house and what you think about these sims obviously I did not create the sims the sims team actually created the sims but let me know if you think that these sims actually fit with this house so to tell you guys a little bit more about these sims we have Marissa Tracy and Danny Davila, who, you know, they're living here together. They've been friends forever. They are really, really close, and they actually run a nectar-making business together. Now, I will have gone over their, like, actual household bio in my world overview that will be going up before this video. So, yeah, if you guys haven't checked that out yet, I will leave a link to it on the screen and in the description. I have a whole playlist of videos for this pack which I will add all of my like early access videos these videos that I'm doing I'm doing three of these like I guess process builds like explaining the process of being part of this as well as showing you guys the builds and my building process and you know all of that stuff or as much of it as I possibly can so yeah, I will have these videos, all of my other videos for this pack, like trailer reactions, early access videos, you know, all of that kind of stuff. I will have all of that in the playlist, which I will leave links down below. But yeah, so I will have, like I said, gone over their like family bio in the world overview. But basically, Marissa is the one who's a little bit more business minded. 
she's a little bit like she wants to be fabulously wealthy that's her aspiration she's a little bit more business minded she's a little bit more into like networking and the kind of like the businessy behind the scenes side or not behind the scenes side but be more like yeah kind of business minded side of it Whereas Danny, they are a little bit more like into the whole craft of nectar making, like actually making the nectar and knowing all about it and, you know, a little bit more of the creative side of the business. They're a little bit more into all of that stuff. So in my head, I knew that I really wanted them to have obviously space for nectar making, which is why I do have that little barn or like converted barn in the backyard. Obviously, normally barns would be probably for animals and with this pack you can have mini goats and mini sheep and then obviously of course horses as well. But these sims don't have any animals, they're like I said a little bit more into the whole nectar making side of this pack basically. So I converted that barn and turned it into a kind of like nectar making space as well as kind of like a tasting area so i have a bar in there and then eventually i also add in another office space so this house has two offices it has one on the first floor of the main house and then we also have one in the barn which i figured would probably be danny's since they are the one that's a little bit more into the whole like nectar making process they would probably be the one that's like outside in the barn most often or maybe it's marissa's and she likes being in the barn when danny is like working on nectar you know in like in there where they have the like little nectar making i guess you could say station or item or whatever you want to call it but where they basically stomp on the grapes to make nectar that's where I have that placed and then in the barn as well we have a staircase that's going to go down into a basement where I basically have like a wine cellar or a nectar cellar in this case and fun thing with that is I didn't think that they would actually add in like a reason to have a basement when it comes to nectar making and like having it actually serve a purpose because in the sims 3 when we had nectar making there was i don't think there was any benefit to having an actual basement i knew i know that sims could make nectar and they could age them in the sims 3 on like those nectar racks like the storage racks but I don't think that had anything to do with whether it was above ground or below ground or anything like that. But in The Sims 4, apparently, Nectar will actually age faster if it's placed underground. And also, the higher your Sims' Nectar making skill is, the faster and better it will age. Which, you know, kind of does make sense. But yeah, so I do have a little, like, Nectar cellar in the back of this build, or like underneath the back of this build i guess you could say but you access it through the barn anyway and then i did also want to make sure that i have a bunch of plants on the lot so a bunch of harvestable plants for danny to use to make their nectar and all of that stuff because like i said they are very into the whole craft of nectar making so I made sure to have some grapes and I believe strawberries and maybe blueberries as well, I think, or blackberries, blackberries on the lot. I think that's what I added. But yeah, there's a bunch of plants in the back that they can use to make nectar. And then in the main house, like I said, we have another office, probably for Marissa or Danny or I don't know, maybe it's just like a general space. And then obviously we have a nice big kitchen, dining room area, which we're actually working on right now. We have a nice big living room as well, downstairs, as well as a half bathroom. And then upstairs, we actually have two main bedrooms. So the bedrooms upstairs are pretty much the same size. They're laid out obviously a little bit differently and they're shaped a little bit differently. But they're pretty much the same size overall. And then they each actually have their own ensuite as well. Because I figured, you know, they are best friends. They're not like, you know, siblings or anything like that. And in my head, they probably both own this house. So, you know, I figured when they bought it, maybe they renovated the whole thing, obviously. So they renovated the whole thing and then 
You know, they made sure that they had space for both of them. Or maybe they built this place and they built it that way to begin with. Who knows? But yeah, they both have very nice sized bedrooms as well as their own en suites, like I said. And that is basically the whole house. Now, I do want to mention really quickly that I did cut out a lot of footage from this build. Because... The way that this whole process worked basically is at the beginning of this like process I guess you could say we got the pack and we got a whole separate version of the game kind of the way early early access I guess you could say works so like sims camp almost access but yeah so basically the way that works is they give you a completely different version of the game so the game isn't on your normal sims 4 it's a completely different game that they add to your library and that is why we have my little like ea id floating around the screen i hope it's not too fast or like too disorienting for you guys honestly at this point i've looked at it so much and i've gotten used to it that i don't really even see it at all anymore but yeah i hope it's not too fast or too disorienting or too distracting but yeah, that is why I have like that little like name floating all over the screen. It's actually on the game when I play it, when I play this early version of the game, like I did with early access as well. You know, it's physically on the screen. I look at it as well. So yeah, that is why that's there. But basically the way that works is they give you the pack and like the base game. And like not all of the objects and all of the things are obviously finished when you get it. So when I started the process of building all of these lots, the pack wasn't finished. Like the world wasn't finished. Like I said, none of the things even had names. A lot of the items didn't have names and you know, all of that stuff. So that is why I have that little software not final like disclaimer on the screen because yeah, it's not final. So... Basically, when I started, like I said, we didn't have all of the items. So with all of these builds, you will see me use placeholder items a lot. So whether that's stuff from the base game that looks really out of place and like it makes no sense. Or whether it's just stuff from the pack. Like downstairs right now in the cellar, I have a couple of china cabinets or like, you know, plate cabinets just stacked there for no reason. And I did that because I needed to remember that I wanted to put nectar barrels there. So we didn't have that object yet. So I needed to like just put something there to remind myself that, hey, I want to go back and change up some stuff. So yeah, that is why I have a bunch of like weird placeholder stuff everywhere. And also because of that, because I didn't have access to all of the finished items at the same time, I needed to change stuff as I go and now that whole thing like the changing stuff that happened over the course of a couple of months so the way this worked is you know you get the game you start building and you know first off you're mostly just focused on doing stuff like you know the general shape of the build and the layout you know where do I want stuff to go is this layout going to give me like enough bedrooms and bathrooms and all of that kind of stuff and you know maybe you'll start working on you know object placement and figuring out you know can I make this space work because obviously you're also not allowed to use any cheats I do need to mention that I did not use any cheats for any of these builds like no move objects no like free rotating so like holding alt and freely rotating or freely placing items no raising stuff up no sizing stuff up or down like no show hidden objects or live edit or anything like that now for someone like me who is so used to having those cheats on permanently normally when i build in my like regular game i have a mod that makes it so that move objects and all of that stuff is permanently on like i don't even turn it off anymore i don't even have to type in the cheats that's how used i that's how i that's how used i am used i am used i am whatever but that is how accustomed i am to having access to those cheats now so going in and trying to build stuff without that was very difficult but also a very fun challenge and it kind of made made me remember the time when you know when the sims 4 first came out 
and move objects wasn't a thing the cheat physically did not exist at the beginning you couldn't type it in it didn't do anything there was no cheat for stuff like that so you know it t kind of took me back to you know that era i guess you could say of you know not knowing any of these cheats not knowing that they existed so it was really fun actually and then also obviously i needed to keep in mind limitations in the terms of objects so i needed to remember that you know sims needed to be able to root everywhere and because i'm not using move objects i needed to place items in a way where obviously they have their own footprint and i needed to work around that and a lot of the footprints for items are a lot bigger than i would have ever thought they were like going from my normal game columns for example i never knew columns had that big of a footprint and could interfere that much with items before i did this because like i said i never build without move objects so it's not something that ever crossed my mind before <laughs> but yeah so basically you start building and you figure out you near know, layouts and object placement all of that stuff then you send the build off to the sims team they review it and then they give you feedback so they tell you you know maybe you know this shape doesn't quite work or maybe these windows feel a little bit weird in this space or maybe you know having all of these windows on this one side of the house is a little bit too much or you know the routing here doesn't work or the floor plan doesn't make sense or in the case of this build the upstairs was way too symmetrical so you will notice or you won't really notice but basically i did cut out like my first probably two or three attempts at the upstairs so i would i like went in did the layout did most of the furnishing upstairs then you know got feedback from the sims team changed it up got feedback again changed it up and I did that like three or four times. I think this like end result that I will actually show you guys is my like fourth attempt at the upstairs floor plan. So, you know, stuff like that I did cut out because honestly, you don't need to see me changing up the same room four times before I decide on what I actually want to do with it or decide on what I actually am going to like leave it as if that makes sense so i did cut out some stuff like that you know where i like know for a fact that it is not going to stay that way so why bother showing it to you guys so yeah stuff like that that is why you will see me going back to certain rooms over and over and over again because you know I recorded like i said this over the course of a couple of months so i will do so i would do something get feedback then go back in and change it later so it's kind of very different from how i would normally build normally i would you know go in like do the exterior all of that stuff and then i would go room by room and finish the entire room and then you know once i usually when i move on to the next one i don't go back to a room that i've already done so this whole process was a very big like eye-opening experience i guess you could say and in a lot of different ways like knowing a lot of the restrictions that the sims team has now with like building and what you know actually impacts performance like gameplay wise and system wise and all of that stuff is actually really really cool like stuff that i would have never ever thought of like having a like large amount of different wallpapers for example actually impacts performance so with this build you'll notice that on the exterior especially i tried to use the same wallpaper but in different swatches because that doesn't matter to performance if you use different swatches so i tried to use the same wallpaper in as many places as i could whereas normally when i build i will use like two or three or four different wallpapers just on the exterior and then the interior will probably have like five or six different wallpapers because i'll make all of the bedrooms different and you know all of that kind of stuff whereas with this one i needed to keep that in mind a little bit more and you know having stuff like mirrors mo having multiple mirrors in one room is hell for like performance 
and stuff like computers like computers are such a big drain on performance for like the game because it's a object where your sims can do a lot of interactions so you know stuff like that it's so interesting and like i said it's stuff that i would have never ever thought of but after doing this it's actually really cool knowing that now you will see me also messing around with the shape of the build a little bit because some parts of it were a little bit awkward and just wasn't working overall like i said this build does have two two bedrooms and two and a half bathrooms but i honestly i don't think i show me furnishing any of the bathrooms because i did go back and forth with them quite a lot because yeah like i said originally the whole upstairs was very symmetrical because the upstairs of this house is basically just a square it was very hard to not make it symmetrical so yeah it took me quite a few tries and here i am starting on like changing up the layout and you know making it not symmetrical and stuff like that but even you know the version that i work on right now actually changes towards the end again so yeah it is a it's a it's a very big like it's a process i guess you could say it's definitely a process now something else that i also want to mention is i will be doing a tour at the end of this build but that tour has been recorded like it was recorded months ago so it was recorded months ago after i submitted the final version of my build i recorded a tour of it and i even mentioned in that tour video that i don't know what the sims team are going to change because they did warn us that they were they might have to go in like later on do obviously the final checks and you know all of that stuff and they might have to change up some stuff so they might need to delete some items or you know swap out some things or even add some items because even at the end of this like whole process i didn't have access to all of the items they did add a couple of like really late last minute items you know after i had already finished with the build so like during the speed build portion I don't even think I had access to the kitchen counters. I do believe I have them in the tour part, but I didn't I didn't have them in the speed build portion. And I know there are a couple of other things that they did go in and add in later on. I knew I know like there were some like especially decorative items that came in like really really late that they went in and added in for me. So yeah, the version that you guys are going to be seeing in the tour isn't even the final version. <laughs> but the version that's in the game though, the one that you get if you buy the pack, which by the time you guys are seeing this video probably should be out already. The pack itself should be out already. So yeah, if you buy the pack and you go into any of my lots, then you will see the final versions. But yeah, like I said, I don't know which order I'm uploading these videos in because I have early access videos that I'm posting. I have these videos, obviously these three videos. And yeah, like I said, I have no idea what order I'm posting these in, but let me know what you guys think about them. Like, th like I said, this whole process has been absolutely incredible and literally it will go down as one of the most amazing experiences ever. Like being able to say that something that i created something that i built will be in my favorite game forever is honestly such a surreal feeling seeing this build in the trailer for this pack and especially that little like short video that the sims posted over on twitter which i will leave linked below <laughs> But in that short little video that they posted on Twitter where they showed off this build and a little bit more of these sims and, you know, seeing the build in the trailers and, like, seeing all of my... I didn't, I didn't see all of my builds, but I saw this build and then the dance hall in the trailers. And just seeing that and knowing that I built it is such a, like I said, such a surreal feeling. It's so weird, but also so amazing at the same time. I do apologize if I'm sounding a little bit like a broken record, by the way, about, you know, saying how amazing it is. And I don't mean to sound super, like, 
you know, conceited or anything like that. It's just, yeah, it's a very, it's a very weird feeling. It's a very great feeling, but a very weird feeling. <laughs> But yeah, I hope you guys like how these builds turned out. Let me know what you think about them in the comments. And if you play in any of them or anything like that, let me know. Because I would love to know that. I would love to see it as well. So if you post pictures or anything like that on Twitter or threads, I do have both of my links down below in the description. Feel free to tag me. It's the same at, like the same handle on both. Just Chrissy YT. It's exactly the same as the name that's floating around the screen and my like gallery ID and all of that stuff. So yeah, tag me on Twitter, tag me on threads. If you want to join our Discord, that's also in the description. It's completely free to join. But yeah, feel free to share pictures with me. I would love to see what you guys do with these builds and if you move other sims into them or, you know, stuff like that. Let me know. I would love to see that, like I said. But yeah, so we're going around now and we're changing up a couple of items and a couple of colors as well because I was a little bit like indecisive when it came to colors. So this is the office space that I told you guys I added probably for Danny or maybe Marissa, I don't know, whoever you think would fit this office best. It's a little bit darker than the one in the interior of the house, so the inside of the house is quite bright and more neutral i have a couple of pops of yellow and green especially their bedrooms are a little bit more colorful as well with some purple and yellow and green but the barn outside is definitely the more darker part of the build so the interior is like really dark wooden floorboards a couple of like dark wood accent walls that dark blue of the exterior i brought that inside as well in that little office space but yeah i really really like the way this build turned out you guys it is probably like i don't want to say it's my favorite build that i did for the pack i think the dance hall is still my favorite but this is a close second honestly and yeah here you can see me painting the ceilings because yeah that was a new feature that came with the base game update actually before this pack comes out you will already have access to that but yeah painting the ceilings was such a weird like thing because Part of me actually forgot about that. I will admit, during this process, part of me did forget. Even during my early access videos, they, I, I don't think I recorded any like of me actually painting the ceilings in those videos. Because I did forget. I did have to go back in and do it later. But yeah, so painting the ceilings is something that I'm still getting used to and figuring out and remembering about. Kind of like curved walls, like I know they're there but like I can't be bothered to use them if that makes sense. But the ceilings one, I'm definitely going to be using that in like every build I do from now on because we don't have to have those plain boring stark white ceilings anymore which is actually freaking fantastic and honestly i cannot wait to do some more builds with that like i can already picture like castle builds and mansions and stuff like that with really fun fancy ceilings so yeah that is going to be so cool <laughs> but yeah we're going in now and adding a couple more decorative items and you know as i get stuff i add some like more decorative things all of that stuff it took me forever by the way to figure out what table i wanted to use in the dining room originally i wanted to use the new six seater round dining table that we're getting with the pack and i just wanted to put four chairs on it you will see me swap them around a couple of different times but at the end of the day i do think i stuck with the like normal base game rectangular table it was just better for rooting, honestly, because the six-seater, I don't know, Sims rooted around it a little bit weirdly. So, yeah, I figured, you know, just having a rectangular table, don't get fancy with it, you know, it, it works perfectly fine, it fits perfectly fine. So, yeah, we just have that table, and then the living room is another space where I, like, chopped and changed it a lot, because... The living room layout, this whole house's layout actually was such a process. Like there were so many things where there were so many times where I wanted to do something and my brain, the way my brain works, like I think of it a certain way, but I don't always, the way I think of stuff 
doesn't always translate well to other people like how my brain works doesn't always like come across the right way it doesn't always look the same to others so what might make sense to me didn't make sense to anyone else and yeah it was just it was weird it was i needed to like change my mindset about some things when i was doing this but i actually really liked the way it turned out and like i said even though it was a challenge it was a challenge that was very eye-opening and it kind of forced me to think outside of the box a little bit think a little bit differently than i normally would and build differently than i normally would so yeah like i said let me know what you think about this build does this build look like a typical chrissy's corner build if that makes sense but yeah let me know what you think now i will also admit i am going to get a little bit sappy really quickly but this whole process and finally being able to post these videos for me is a very bittersweet kind of thing because yes obviously i'm very excited about this i mentioned many many times in this video how amazing this whole thing is but also it's a it's a very bittersweet thing for me it's a very sad thing for me as well finally being able to share these videos and i'm actually getting like te i'm actually tearing up as i'm saying this but yeah i mean i i lost my mom in may at the beginning of may and she was obviously with me through this whole process of building all of these builds and i still live at home so i still lived with her so she saw me through this whole process she saw me freaking out having a couple of meltdowns as well because of you know all of the pressure that i was putting on myself to make sure that these builds were absolutely perfect but yeah like my own perfectionism basically but she saw me through all of that she was my sounding board for a lot of my ideas and you know this whole pack style as well is something that she would have absolutely loved because she was a simmer 2 she hasn't really played sims 4 or sims 3 but she played sims 1 with me and sims 2 and all of that stuff so like i know how sh how excited she was for me to reach the point where i could share this stuff where i could share my excitement and share these videos and builds and you know see all of your reactions to the builds and all of that stuff so it is a very bittersweet thing for me because yes i know she is she would be proud of me if she was still here she is proud of me wherever she is but it's still it's a very weird thing it's very weird to not be able to like get up and go show her your comments or you know show her your videos or stuff like that so yeah i am actually crying as i'm sitting here which is not the way i thought this voiceover was going to go but anyway i am going to stop that train of thought right now because i cannot get all choked up when we're going to be doing the rest of this voiceover but yeah we're actually on the outside of this build getting way away from that topic like right now <laughs> but yeah we're on the outside of this build i'm doing a little bit of landscaping i did do a bit of landscaping off camera but there's not much space on this lot for me to fill with landscaping so i didn't but yeah we're just doing a little bit of terrain painting finishing touches all of that stuff and then we're gonna go into the tour so I hope you guys enjoyed this and yeah, I'll see you guys over in the tour in just a second. Hi everyone. So as you can see, we're back with another tour and like I mentioned in every single one of my other two tour videos, I don't know in which order I'm posting these in. So as you can see, this is recorded way back. So I recorded this a couple of months before you guys are actually seeing it. So the version of me in the voiceover that you just saw, obviously months after I recorded this. So I have no idea what I'm going to talk about in that video or anything like that <laughs> or like in that voiceover. But as you can tell by now, I'm, I had the amazing honor of building three of the lots for the new Sims 4 expansion. And this is actually going to be 
the tour of the residential lot so i also built the dance hall that's a community lot and then i also built a starter home that i don't know like i said which order you guys are seeing this in but i also built a starter home on like a 50 by 50 lot by the way which was such a struggle <laughs> but this house is actually going to be for a pair of sims they're not like together or anything they're just roommates they're best friends and like yeah building for an in-game family like an actual official family was such a i'm not gonna say i don't want to say struggle because yeah it was difficult but because you know it wasn't my sims that i made that i know but also i felt like the house for a in-game family or like an in-game household has a certain amount of pressure to it to make sure that you know the house looks good that the house makes sense for them that the house you know fits with their story and their personalities and you know makes sense if that makes sense so <laughs> so yeah that is that was a whole other challenge but it was an amazing one i had so much fun with this house but yeah like i said i have no idea what i've talked about in the voiceover of the speed build so yeah i don't know what i've rambled about in that or not so if i repeat myself in this i am sorry but i do also want to mention i mentioned this in the start to home video as well but we currently have construction on our neighbors they're like doing construction next door and there's a lot of hammering and banging and stuff like that going on and i am recording this in the afternoon it's like 3 p.m right now and I'm recording this in the afternoon, so obviously they're still working. And there's nothing I can do about that. I'm really hoping that you guys, that the mic isn't picking it up. But yeah, there's nothing I can do about it. So if you hear anything, I am sorry. But out of, out of my hands. Can't do anything about it. But yeah, so let's hop into the game. So yeah, this is the Nectar Friends stop. Not I almost I keep wanting to say starter, and I have no clue why I keep wanting to say starter. But yeah, so I'm just trying to find the where is it? I'm trying to find the like information for these Sims so that I can tell you guys about them. But yeah, so basically we have two Sims, we have two friends. These aren't the Sims that are shipping with the pack, by the way. These are just my Sims that I put down. To build the house so ignore them but yeah this is the ranches area we're on this gorgeous lot tucked way back in the little corner these sims are basically all about you know they're all about making nectar they're very into it they run a business together and they're very very successful one of them is more into like the business aspect of it so like you know the uh, yeah basically like the business of it like the running the actual business of it so you know finances and all of that stuff whereas the other one is a little bit more creative so they're into like they're the ones that you know make the logos for the nectar they're, they've designed the logo they you know do all of like the gardening and stuff they're very involved in the actual process of making nectar and nectar making is something that your sims can now actually do in this pack as well it's not just horses but yeah your sims can actually make nectar in this so think like sims 3 world adventures type stuff so yeah we have that but this is their house as you can see it's a very pretty red farmhouse because how could i not i originally did try and make this lot a completely different color i i think i originally tried going for green and I just, I didn't like it. I really like the vibe of the red farmhouse. Now, it is a little bit more modern. So in my head, you know, these two, they're both young adults as well. So I figured this isn't a house that they've like lived in their entire lives. This is something that they maybe bought and they've renovated it. So it is a little bit more modern on the interior. There's quite a bit of white and black throughout the place as well because I wanted to make it look like it is a little bit more modern both of them are young adults both of them are successful businesswomen and I just I love the way this house turned out but I really hope you guys like it too but yeah so if you walk up to the house you have obviously the big wraparound front porch which is something that I knew I just had to add so yeah we have the big wraparound front porch and at the front you also 
have this little like window at the bottom and then the window at the top now obviously i was working with ea's restrictions for this so uh, like ideally i would have maybe put like some of these really tall windows up here instead so that it would be like a full wall height window but because i couldn't use move objects that just wasn't possible so this is kind of the workaround that i came up with so we have the little two tile window and then we have the little triangle window up the top because i could have just removed that and changed the shape of the front a little bit but i was set on using this like window and the only annoying thing is that <laughs> that if you use move objects i mean if you don't use move objects and you make this smaller then like you physically cannot place this window on like you need that much space above it which is it's kind of difficult if you're not building with move objects now obviously if i had move objects on i could just place that window anywhere i wanted to but obviously you know there are restrictions for builds like this which i will have probably talked more about in the speed build but you know that wasn't too bad of a workaround i actually really like the way this looks at the front and then at the top you'll see that it's actually open to the below which it, it, some of you might not like this and i do get that but i really like the idea of this window actually serving a purpose and not having it just look straight into a wall or like straight into the roof with nothing like there's no reason for it so i actually went ahead and i deleted the flooring above this little like stairway entry area and i still wanted to have that big chandelier there so i put down a little bit of fencing you know just to make it look like it's some sort of like a supporting beam or something so yeah now we have the light that actually shines into it i can't remember which time of day it does but i know it does and yeah it shines into it you know you can actually see it on the floor downstairs and we still have the big chandelier which i really like so yeah we have that now going into the front we obviously have the big wraparound porch some you know rocking chairs out front so they can sit there you know look out enjoy the very pretty view and yeah we have just the big front door and like i said i tried to go for something a little bit more modern so there are touches of white and black throughout the build especially with all of the windows and doors so yeah we still have that very rustic kind of like wooden floorboards running throughout the entire house though so maybe those were like the original floorboards that they decided to keep so they maybe just like sanded them down and varnished them and you know just left them be but yeah you walk in and you're walking in straight into the living room you have the staircase leading up but you walk straight into the living room and you have just a nice couch some seating you have obviously a TV for them and a little coffee, not, not coffee table, but like TV console table thing. And then you have a little coffee table with a little stereo on it and a bookcase, of course. And then you also have a little fireplace. So originally I was thinking about adding the big fireplace. And I know I in the speedball you'll have seen that I had it on that wall where the TV is now. But we went over the layout a lot you know me and the team feedback and stuff like that and you know basically it came down to the fact that it felt weird having the tv on this wall when the couch was facing the fireplace and not the tv so instead of moving the couch and having it be in like this awkward spot in front of the front door i just decided to move the fireplace <laughs> And I had the big fireplace on this wall as well for a second, but it just, it, the wall wasn't big enough for me to make it look good. So I decided to go for this one that's a little bit more, not really modern, because that's very clearly not modern by any stretch of the imagination. But it's not as big and like rustic, rustic and like, I guess, stony as the original one. <laughs> Honestly. I don't even know what I'm doing at this point. I'm really tired. And I've already rec already recorded the other two tours. And I'm very nervous about these videos. So I'm just all over the place. 
But yeah, we have this kind of, I think it's one tile. Yeah, so yeah, it's one tile. It's actually, I think, the smallest fireplace that we have in the game. Yeah, so originally I had, what am I doing? Originally I had like the painting there. I didn't have or, like the tapestry there. I didn't have that chair and I had like this big fireplace over there. But because I couldn't use the move objects sheet or like sizing down anything, because I couldn't do that, the rug was kind of like underneath the fireplace, which really irritated me. And also it's probably a fire hazard and it just doesn't make sense. So rather than trying to find a smaller rug, or you know, if I was doing this in my game, I would have just sized it down. But because I couldn't do that, instead of doing that, I just decided to delete the big fireplace and put down the smaller one, which makes a lot more sense to me. And also, it's a new fireplace, and I'm already using the big one in the starter home. So, yeah, I really, really like that. That That is going to get so much use in my game. So, yeah, we have that fireplace, living room. So, moving on, if you go into the front door and you go to the right, you actually walk into the kitchen through this big... This isn't technically an archway like these ones are. These are just spandrels. And the reason I did it this way is because I physically could not put an archway there, even if I tried, because the stairs are there and the door is right there and the game doesn't like doing that if you're not using move objects. So instead of messing around with that and changing the entire layout, I just decided to open it up and put in some spandrels instead. So it's technically still two different spaces and, you know, you could delete that if it bothers you from up top. Then it just wouldn't have the spandrel and it would be totally fine too. But yeah, we have the two separate spaces. And then going through the living room right to the back, you can actually walk through here into this little hallway area. That's kind of like a mudroom space a little bit because I figured this would be where your sims when they're outside in the garden they would come in here they would maybe take off their shoes I didn't put down any of the shoe racks because it didn't look right to me but you can you know hang up your coat or your hat or whatever you know there's a mirror in there as well and then you know this also leads into the downstairs half bathroom so like the guest bathroom if you wanted to wash up after coming in from outside and then this also leads around into the kitchen so basically your sims can loop around right around this whole space and it's very easy to navigate as well so yeah you have a lot of access points and yeah going into this side you have the little kitchen area it isn't as modern as honestly it's not as modern as you might think I mean, obviously, they have a lot of modern appliances. So they have a dishwasher, they have a microwave, they have a really expensive modern, you know, fridge and stove and everything. But the counters are all clearly very rust rustic. And like with the floorboards, I thought maybe these are, you know, original ones that were here. And obviously, these Sims probably added all of the archways, opened it up a little bit. Maybe, you know, maybe there was an actual wall there that led into a dining room and they opened it up. But they decided to keep the counters and the cabinets. Maybe they just sanded them down, painted the counters a nice blue color. Now, you might think the blue stands out a little bit too much with all of the brown. But honestly, it was getting very brown in here. <laughs> and I just... I liked the pop of color. You'll see once we get to their bedrooms and in the speed build. Their bedrooms are also a little bit more colorful than the rest of the house. Just because it's the kind of vibe that I was getting from the Sims. You know, from hearing their personalities and stuff. I just, I thought they would enjoy a little pop of color here and there. So they have like the green couches as well in the living room and the brighter rugs and stuff. But yeah, so we just have the little kitchen area, microwave, all of that stuff on that side. And then on this, this side, you have the, not the fridge, <laughs> the stove and everything like that. And then this leads into, obviously, the little dining room as well. So we have a little dining table, a little hutch over there. And then this also leads onto the little wraparound porch. So there's a bunch of different ways for your sims to get outside if they want to. Now, going back over to this porch, you just have obviously the big door that leads outside, 
some storage, some nectar, you know, boxes over there. Maybe they're supposed to move that somewhere. Maybe they've, you know, they're supposed to move it into town or maybe take it downstairs into the basement or whatever, but they just haven't gotten around to it. And then the other room on this floor is actually the little office space. So, as you can see in the speedball, there's actually two offices in this because there's two sims. And they both have very different personalities. In my head, they're both very, like, they're both career-oriented women. They're both very career-oriented, very much, you know, they enjoy running their business and stuff like that. And even though they're very different personality types, they both still, you know, very career-oriented, like I said. So, they both have their own office. Now, this is the office that I thought would be for the, a little bit more of like the, I guess, creative one, I guess you could say. So, she has the, like, she also has a computer, but she has just a little desk, there's a bookcase, there's some seating. Or maybe this is more of just the, I don't know, general office space. Maybe she doesn't really do a lot of, you know, office type work. But from what I know of her, she actually does like writing, so she has a little computer to do that in. And then they also have a little chess table. Now, with the chess table, I originally, I, I added it, and then we were talking about not having too many hobby items on the lot for no reason. And then some group popcorn actually said that, oh, maybe you could keep the chess table because they're both very competitive people like they're both very competitive sims as well they're best friends but they're still very competitive so maybe having the chess table is a nice way of showing that you know maybe they like playing chess together to see who would win so yeah you have that and that's basically the entire little office space now obviously you could go in and decorate it a lot more if you wanted to it could also be another bedroom or whatever you needed but yeah that's just for these sims now moving on upstairs we have just a little landing area grandfather clock some artwork you know big chandelier all of that stuff and then going to the right side this is actually the bedroom that i thought would be for the more career oriented of the two roommates so the sim that's very much into more of the business aspect of you know nectar making and running their business so yeah, she has a little bit more of a like orangey, yellow, pinkish color scheme to her bedroom. And I just, I love the way this turned out. I am absolutely obsessed with this bed and this rug. It's going, it's going to go in so many of my builds. As well as all of these like really pretty flowers and the open clothes racks that have like the hanging clothes. These are actually items like the Dream Home Decorator clothes are where this is a shelf. Or like, yeah, basically like a shelf or a like coat rack type thing. And then these clothes are stuff that you can put down. There's also another one that looks like that as well. So yeah, those are things that you can hang like on any of those clothes, clothes, hooks, clothes, racks type of things. And then this, um, they both have their own ensuite as well. There's a half bathroom downstairs, obviously, but... Both of their bedrooms have their own ensuite, so this one has a just a shower, whereas the other Sims ensuite actually has a shower and tub. That's just how the floor plan worked out. But yeah, so on this side we have the bedroom for the Sim that I figured would be more artistic and more into like, you know, the actual nectar making aspect of it and like gardening and stuff. So yeah, we just have her room. It's a little bit more yellow and purplish colored with, you know, some darker woods and stuff. And then just obviously the ensuite as well. And that is basically the whole interior of the main house. Now, if you go outside, you have a really nice lot, not lot area, but like yard area. And you could obviously add some more stuff into this if you wanted to. But yeah, you have the trash can, you have a little gate to get outside. We have a little grill over here as well, a little outdoor seating area. And then we have all of their plants. So if you get this build, I believe all of these plants will actually be on the lot. So there's already stuff here for your sims to garden with and, you know, make nectar with. 
So you have some grapes as well. I know I put down a lot of grape, like grape plants. But I also put down a couple of blackberry and strawberry bushes as well. Which, where are they? Yeah, I put down a couple of strawberry bushes as well. Because I know your sims can make nectar out of a lot of different stuff. So yeah, that's really, really cool. I haven't done a lot. I haven't really done... I wanted to say a lot. But I haven't really done any gameplay with this. Apart from like playtesting my build. So I'm really excited to check out all of that. But yeah, so... That's just the backyard and then we also have this little barn building that I built that I figured, you know, maybe this was here, like same with the house, this was here and they just completely renovated it when they bought the place. So you have these really gorgeous barn doors that I'm absolutely obsessed with. So you have that and then you walk straight in, you have a little bar area so that they can, you know, I believe one of them is into mixology so yeah, they can, you know, Pour some nectar, make some drinks, which made a lot of sense. You have the actual nectar making, you know, station item. That's actually, I believe, like a 4x4 item. Yeah, it's like a 4x4 item. So, yeah, they actually get into it and stomp on the nectar, which is really cool. We have a couple of just gardening things hanging up. We have a little decorative thing over there. And then through these doors, I wanted to make it look like this wall and that half wall is kind of like new additions so not really temporary walls but like they've added them to kind of just separate the spaces off a little bit so in here we actually have the other sims you know little office space so this is the sim that in my head is a little bit more into all of like the business aspects of it so they have their own computer they have a camera as well because they're into photography actually just a bookcase, a chair, and, you know, some decorative stuff. Very plain. But, again, I wanted this to look a little bit more modern than the one in the house. So, yeah, I really like the way that turned out. And then, going downstairs, there is actually a basement. So, you can go down these stairs. You get into this little landing area through these doors. And then you have a little nectar cellar. So, I put down a bunch of these barrels, the crates... You know, all of that stuff and a little, like, small crate up here. So maybe this is one that they were recently testing or, like, tasting or whatever. And they've just left it there. But yeah, we have a little, like, basement cellar as well, which I absolutely love. I didn't even think that this was something that I could add. So, yeah, I was really happy that I could. But yeah, that's basically this whole build. I think this tour has been way, way too long. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know what you think about this build. But I will pass you back to future Chrissy for the outro. Okay, so with all of that said, I really hope you guys enjoyed this build. And if you play with these sims or in this build or with any of my other builds that I've done for this pack and you want to tag me in pictures like on Twitter or on threads or anything like that, those links are all in the description. I would love to see what you guys do with my builds. And if you want to join our Discord, it's always linked in the description as well. It's completely free, it's open to everyone. And you can like share your pictures with us over there or like videos that you make or anything like that. Or just come and chat with me and our community. I would love to see you guys over there. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like. And if you're, want, if you're new to the channel and want to see more Sims content, feel free to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell as well to be notified of whenever I upload another video. But yeah, I hope you guys are all having a great day and that you're really looking forward to this pack. And if you have the pack already and you've been playing with it or building with it, let me know what you think about it in the comments down below. But I hope you're all having a great day and I'll talk to you all in my very next video. Bye everyone!